Last week, Charlie Gasparino left us with a cliffhanger, telling us that there was a mystery billionaire bidder about to step up to the plate in the bidding for the Miami Marlins. Charlie always swings for the fences, and you've got a home run, Charlie, revealing uh, who that mystery is. story that we, we broke over the weekend. We should point out that we also said it was a mystery bidder with ties to the South Florida uh, community, right. the business community. And I had a sneaking suspicion it was this guy, and it turned out to be this guy. We're talking about Jose Mas, uh, Jose Mas, not Jose Mascanosa, Jose Mas. If it says in the, in the banner, Mascanosa, that's his father, was Jorge Mas Canosa. Now, why are these people prominent? They are two of the most prominent Cuban-American businessmen, political activists in South Florida. Jose Mas is worth about two and a half billion dollars. His father started one of the biggest Cuban refugee organizations, uh, died about 10 years ago, left the family business to, to his son, Ho Jose Mas, runs something called Mass Tech and a bunch of private oh, equity of firms. Course. Right? Mass they, Tech. from what we understand, Mr. Moss is in the lead to buy the Miami Marlins. And one of the things that makes him appealing, as opposed to Derek Jeter, who really doesn't have the money from what we understand. Jeb Bush, again, does not have the money. Tag Romney has some of the money, but not enough of the money. He can literally put down a billion dollars and buy the team. He can write the check if he has now. I'm not saying he will. I think it's a likely. Why wouldn't he want Derek Jeter by his side for the for the uh, yeah. you know, Hollywood I mean, sparkle? What, what we understand is this: is that he's gonna he's gonna uh, offer a minority stake to to Jeter and his group if they want to be in. Uh, I think the one problem that Jeter's going to have with that is that it's unlikely he's going to play a major um, management role in the, in, the, in, the company, in the team. Mm -hmm. That it'll be Ho Ho Jose Moss's uh, call on who's the general manager, and it might not be Derek Jeter. I mean, we should talk out. We talk. Listen, Derek Jeter was an amazing ball player, future Hall of Famer, you know, former Yankee shortstop, as you know, future Hall of Famer. No management experience. You know, he may need to. Somebody like. Jose Moss. Or somebody like a Randy Levine who runs the New York Yankees to run the team. Ah. Uh, so I, listen, I can see who knows Maybe. what's going on He's, here. Charlie's connecting the dots. Yes, I'm just, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just telling you that that's the type of guy you get to run a team, mm -hmm. someone that has b baseball management business knowledge, particularly this team. I, and I'm not saying, and then we should point out that this isn't a done deal, okay? This is what our sources are telling you. Not a done deal. He's stu still doing his due diligence. One of the uh, one of the, the sticking points clearly is uh, the amount of losses that the Marlins have. Marlins are deeply in the red, and uh, the the number is anywhere between 40 on the low end and 70 on the high end. So it might be even more than what people thought. Uh, they have an attendance problem. They have backloaded contracts. Some of their big contracts are backloaded, meaning the numbers kick in later on. You know, the more money you pay to these guys, you know, as their contracts go on, and that that means you know future pressures and pressure in the future, financial pressure, and then you got the notion of cord cutting. You know, that's hitting every baseball team. Can you, you know, can you sign the same big deals with, 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 uh, with the various cable providers because people are not watching TV as much, right? So, you know, the, they're not as lucrative. The teams don't make as much. So you've got to put all this together. It's going to take a lot to run this team. But from we understand, he's a local guy, Miami kid. Father was a refugee from, from, from Cuba who came to this country, Jorge, Jorge Mascanosa. His, his dad came to this country with a, with a few pennies in his pocket, and when he died, he was worth $100 million. I mean, this is an American success story. The son runs a very then good business. Then turns it around and, and even builds it higher. Builds it higher, and, you know, I could see a him. good kind of immigrant spirit that yes. we like to see. Yeah, yeah. And, by the way, it's, uh, a, a, it's why this country is great, because we do have immigrants. My dad. My, my, Your grandfather. My, my grandparents. I mean, that's what makes this country great. The fact that immigrants come here and they build stuff. And this is an immigrant uh, success story. If he buys it, and if he doesn't, he's still a success story. But he may, but he may be, it might be the hometown kid maybe buying the hometown baseball team. And we'll see. We'll know this. I think, from what I understand, it's likely to happen this week. We'll know one way or the other. No more cliffhangers for now, but we love it. But it, the sad part is, I don't think Jeter's going to get what he wants here. Maybe a minority state, you can hang out. Okay. Go to thank the games. you. <laughs> you get a discount on games. Yeah. Charlie, thank you.